Welcome to the next level. Hey everyone, this is 8 Flashback, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a Sega Saturn emulator on your NVIDIA Shield. So the emulator we're going to install today is called UO Your Boss, and there's a very good chance I'm pronouncing that wrong. And this used to be available on Google Play, but it's no longer available. So I'm going to show you how to sideload this and get it up and running. And there is another Sega Saturn emulator on Google Play that is available for download called Yaba Shinshiro. But it doesn't have that Sega Saturn BIOS, and it has a few less options. So I prefer using UO Your Boss instead. So right now I'm running a test game on the Shield, and this game's called Final Fight. And I believe this was the last game that was released in the US for the Sega Saturn. But if anyone out there knows of an official Sega Saturn game that was released in the US after this game, let me know. So Sega Saturn emulation on the Shield is actually pretty impressive, and some games can even run at 60 frames per second. But by no means is the emulation perfect, we still have a long ways to go. But there is a lot of games that are playable. So if you love Sega Saturn and you have a Shield, I definitely think this emulator is worth trying out. Alright, to start off with, on our Shield we're going to go to Google Play, and we're going to download an app called ES File Explorer. So if you just type ES at the top, it should pull up. So it's ES File Explorer File Manager. So this is going to be the app we're going to use to sideload that Sega Saturn emulator to our Shield. So after you get ES File Explorer installed on your Shield, it's time to head back to Google Play and we're going to install one more app. And this app's called Sideload Launcher for Android TV. And this app will allow you to view all your sideloaded apps on your Shield. So sometimes what happens is when you sideload an app to the Shield, the app is not recognizable by the Shield, so it doesn't display. But with this app, it allows you to view those sideloaded apps on your Shield or an Android TV device. So that's all we have to download from Google Play is the ES File Explorer and the Sideload Launcher. Now it's time to go ahead and change some settings on our Shield device. So on the home screen, I'm going to scroll down to Settings and select that. Then scroll all the way down to Security and Restrictions. And inside here, we're going to turn the unknown sources to on. And this will allow us to sideload apps that are not on Google Play. Okay, we're done on the Shield for a few. We're going to head over to the PC. And in my description down below, there's going to be a download for Sega Saturn. And inside that download is going to be these two things. The UO Ya Boss application and a games folder. And inside the games folder, it's going to be empty. I can't supply games because I'll get in trouble. Sorry, guys. But this is where you're going to be placed in your own Sega Saturn games. And there is multiple different formats to use, but for me, I have the most luck with bin and Q files and MDS and MDF files. And if you're looking for a place to find Sega Saturn games, check out ISO Zone. So right now, I'm going to grab a couple Sega Saturn backups that are located on my computer and drag them to this new games folder. And for some of your Sega Saturn games, it might have multiple bin files, and that'll still work. All you gotta do is grab all those bin files and put them in the same location. So I'm adding two different games to that games folder, Sonic Jam and Bug 2. And I'm adding both the bin and the Q file and the MDS and the MDF file. Now I'm gonna plug a flash drive in my computer and you can use a flash drive or a hard drive. You just need to have it formatted at FAT32. And this is a 64 gigabyte flash drive so I can fit quite a few games on here. And right now on my flash drive, I have this folder called Temp, but this has nothing to do with the video. I just got some other stuff in here I'm trying to keep separated. So now what I'm going to do is drag the contents from the Sega Saturn folder onto the flash drive. So I'm copying that games folder that has two games inside of it and that Sega Saturn emulator to the flash drive. And you are able to run games from the flash drive, but if you want to copy the games to your shield, you can do that too with the ES File Explorer. But for this video, we're just going to run from the flash drive. Okay, we're done on the PC. Now we're going to grab that flash drive and plug it into the shield. And when we plug that in, we should get a message from ES File Explorer. Asking if we want to use ES File Explorer when we plug in this US device. So we can just select OK and it should open it. But if for some reason you don't get this message, you can also open up ES File Explorer just by going to Apps on the main menu and open it that way. So when you open up ES File Explorer, it should recognize that USB flash drive that you have plugged in. And on mine, it's called USB 1003. So from here, I'm going to select USB by using my directional pad, then A to select it. Then I'll get a message asking if I want to access the USB. I'm going to select OK. Then it's going to pull up the USB folder. I'm going to select that. Then inside here is going to be the contents of the flash drive. Now you want to select that UO Your Boss application and get that installed. It'll bring up a prompt, and you can select Install from there. And it should install pretty fast. It's not a very big file. And once it's done installing, I'm not going to open it yet. I'm just going to select Done. And then press B multiple times to back out of ES File Explorer until I'm back to the main menu of my shield. And what's weird is sometimes the app will show up under games and sometimes it won't. And this time when I installed it, it did show up so I can load it from right here. Uh, but if for some reason it doesn't show up, you can go up to your apps 
and go to the sideload launcher that we installed earlier and we should be able to open the app from this location. So now I'm going to go ahead and select this app and open it and the first time I open it it's going to ask me for permissions and I'm going to go ahead and allow it because I need it to be able to access my USB flash drive. So now it's going to update, we'll give it a few seconds here. Now we're going to select settings and we're going to get everything set up so it's ready to go. So we're going to select game directory. So the game directory is going to be in our flash drive so we need to find that and get that selected. So to find your flash drive it's a little tricky but what you have to do is select the two dots there at the top and keep selecting that until you get down to a folder that's called storage. So storage is going to show all USB devices connected and I only have one device connected so I'm going to select this one. Now I'm going to scroll down to games and this is the folder that we added earlier that has two games in it. So now it's time to highlight select directory and this is going to assign where the games are located for the Sega Saturn emulator. And if you want to you can add multiple different directories where those Sega Saturn games are located. Alright, I'm done selecting directories from now, so I'm just going to go to the bottom here and select OK. Then if you want to, you can change where your downloaded storage would be for your saved games, but I'm just going to leave that alone. You can also select your background image. I'm not going to mess with that either. Uh, the BIOS is already built in on this app, so that's a good plus with this one. Uh, for cartridge, that's going to be for, like for extra memory. For some of your bigger games, that require more RAM. And what I like to select is the 32 Mbit DRAM. That seems to work pretty well for me. Uh, you can also select a different CPU core, but I'd recommend not messing with that until you get at least a couple games up and running so you understand it more. Then you can start playing with these settings and change them to see what works the best for each game. Uh, frame per seconds, I like to display that. That'll show in the upper left corner. It'll show what it's sitting at and it kind of gives you an idea of how well the game's running. And there's quite a few other options you can change, but I'm not going to mess with them. I'm just going to leave them alone. So now I'm going to scroll down to Player 1 and get my controller set up, so I'm going to select Choose then select the shield controller and after selecting the controller it's still not going to work in the game without editing the key map so we're going to select edit key map and this is going to configure what all the buttons do on the controller for the game and you can map the buttons however you choose you just push the button on the controller you want to use for the input that's on the screen and there's only two buttons on the controller that you probably shouldn't program that'd be on the very bottom of the controller there's a triangle button and a circle button I'd leave those buttons alone Okay, I got everything set up the way I want. Now it's time to back out of here. You can just push B to back out and get back to your main screen of the emulator. And if everything went right, the games will show up just like this. And if for some reason the games aren't showing up, you might have some games that are not compatible with this emulator, or you might have selected the wrong directory on accident. You can also select load games and search for games that way. So I'm just going to select the two dots at the top again until I get back to my storage, and then select my flash drive, then scroll down to games, and then my games are going to be located inside this folder. So to load a game this way, I would select the bug2 bin file, or if I want to play Sonic Gem, I'd select the Sonic Gem MDS file. But there's no reason to load the game this way since it's already on my home screen. I'm just going to push the B button and select the game at the top. So bug2 was originally a Sega Saturn exclusive. I think later on it came out for the PC, but back in the day, it was only Sega Saturn. So bug2 actually plays really well on this emulator. The only issue is I can't get the background music to play, I'm not sure what's going on with that. And if you want to save the game, there's actually save state capabilities with this emulator. You just push that bottom left triangle button on the controller and that'll bring up the submenu. Then you can select save state and that'll save exactly where you are. So if you want to pull up that save game at any time, you can start right from that point. So I'm going to load the state and that's going to give me a screenshot preview of where I just was. I'll select that and that can put me right back where I was. And if you want a better idea of what games are compatible with this emulator, I'll give you a link to this website down below. There's a lot of different Sega Saturn games on here in alphabetical order that show what device they used it on, what the results were, what settings they use, and it can be very helpful if you're trying to figure out how to make your game work. But there's some games that are just not compatible with the simulator, and most of those results are posted here too. But all that being said, I'm very impressed on how well the simulator does run on the Nvidia Shield. There's even a couple games that run pretty close to perfect, like Sonic Jam. Even the graphics look improved. Look at the detail on Sonic. He looks great. Well, at least for the Sega Saturn he looks good. A few other games I tested that I know run really well is Night in the Dreams and Sonic R Racing. Another game I tested is Burning Rangers. And that's a pretty intense 3D game, at least for the Sega Saturn. And it does run and it's playable, but the frame rate for the game definitely suffers and it drops down to 40 frames per second at times and it has some occasional glitches here and there. Alright everyone, thanks for watching. If you liked that video, please click that like button. If you want to hear more from me, please subscribe. 
And if you want to help support or sponsor the channel, you can now find me on Patreon. Alright everyone, have a great day, and I'll see you next time.